Dang it, another copyright issue. Maybe I can use this instead. Take a look at Star Wars droids from the uh, Cartoon Club show number 73. These are Char Char Binks. Well, nice to meet you, Char Char. But, anyways, let's enjoy their video, okay? Okay, for that solution, let's get started. Show. It's time we take a look at the counterpart to Star Wars Ewoks, Star Wars Droids. Star Ooh, Wars Droids, or its Star, Wars, title, Droids. Star Wars Droids, The Adventures of R2-D2 and C-3PO, aired alongside Ewoks That's... as part of the Ewoks and Droids Adventure Hour. However, unlike yep, Ewoks, still got Droids Star only Wars lasted one short season. And considering how the second season for Ewoks turned out, that might be for the best. I should mention that both series are available on incomplete DVDs. Ewok's second season was never released, which is common for a lot of shows, but the first seasons of both shows only had 13 episodes. Yep. And for some reason, but five that's episodes even... were left off of both but DVDs. But that's called it Star Wars Retro why? Cartoons. This doesn't make any sense. If you're going to release a season of a no show this short, then why can't you that. release it all? Apparently, any questions involving the DVD releases of the cartoons to people from Lucasfilm get dodged. I also heard they were going to try and stream both series for free on Star Wars. Wars. Com, but that's yet to happen. It's a shame because, CPL believe it or not, Droids is actually too. not too bad. Unlike Ewoks, Droids actually followed several story arcs about Still what C-3PO and R2-D2 supposedly did between episodes 3 and 4. But if you saw episode 3, you know they end up with Bail Organa and subsequently join the Rebels. So basically, this show is not part of the main Star Wars canon. And not just because of the Disney takeover. This and Ewoks were never yeah. considered canon. I got the R2-D2 got Anthony Daniels to be C-3PO. And here's a fun fact. He's voiced the character almost every time he shows up. In every movie, yep. every TV show, every special, I know every even cartoon in commercials. Has, so. Oh, oh man. The only time I know for sure he didn't voice C-3PO was in the Phineas and Ferb Star Wars special. Here he was voiced by Simon Pegg. Now don't you forget this. Why I should stick my neck out for you is quite beyond my capacity. Shut up, Dengar. I'm not sure why they didn't get him for this, especially since it aired not long after Disney got Star Wars. Heck, he was in the Star Wars cameo hey, in the Lego movie. I know for the God's Star sake. Wars theme. I know the Lego back, movies, literally. Let's roll. If only Harrison Ford was that dedicated to his character. Anyway, the droids intro is way better than either of the Ewoks intros. Though it's not one of the best I've heard, and it doesn't quite fit with Star Wars. However, it was performed by Stuart Copeland of the police. That's the retro Star Wars thing. Like I said, this show followed a few story arcs that lasted four years. Well, this is not gonna hurt. Strangely, the first story arc was the only one not included on in the DVD. It was about three people in R2 meeting two racers named Jordan Thal. They end up running into a rebel named Kia who's trying to stop a gang from building a giant weapon. The gang is being run by the son of their boss who's trying to incorporate new technology into their business. 
But it's not being accepted. Meats are gone bad. <laughs> look at them. They look like beach wabas. It's just a minor malfunction. For what they cost you to build, I could have got a few of the old boys together. That's the way old size would have done it. It's not a what? I Still got that? Me. Got and that I'm retro looking? I kind of love these guys. They have a lot Still of Still got the Star Wars I looking. A sitcom about them. They got away, Tiggy. Don't call me Tiggy. In the second story arc, 3PO and R2 and an android are being bought at auction by a miner named Jan. It turns out the android was a prince in disguise that has amnesia and is being pursued by bounty hunters. When they eventually help him regain his memories and thwart the bounty hunters, what? they That's team up with a pilot memory, named thought. Jessica. Then they help him overthrow the tyrant that gave him amnesia and negotiate peace with a neighboring world. Yep. That's if the blue that people Star and the purple Wars people world. can learn to get along, then why can't we? This story actually had an episode some that purple wasn't aliens TV, going on. it wasn't that good anyway. That's still it focused a little on bit some gone. kid and was probably the result of some TV executive know-it-all thinking that kids would like this episode just because it had a kid in it. For the last time, no one likes these kinds of episodes, not even kids. In the final story arc, the droids meet a yep. merchant named Mungo Baobab who's looking for valuable gems I know about that story coming through. Stories. This one might be more Isn't it? because it's basically one big treasure hunt. Also, Mungo might be the most interesting character I've in the series. I still got the boast out of it. He's the only one that has any kind of character development. His quest for the rune stones may come at the cost of the new friends he's made along the way. Yep. He runs into a lost relative of his that spent his entire life treasure hunting and warns him I know on his that deathbed that treasure is not worth a lifetime of loneliness. It becomes to a choice between people and treasure. Family and friends must come first. This I've learned. <laughs> Man, mm -hmm. talk about that. That still must Yeah, it's pretty anyways. standard stuff, but hey, it's something. There's a pretty dark moment in this, too. This guy named Kung, who's working with the Empire, yeah. sprays a deadly it's germ a over a hard hard time. To the land. Kung, you fool. I know about Did that. Few rules, Admiral, directed at our enemies below. The vegetation will grow back in a year. Your methods are too crude, Kung. We're the Empire. We may have a space station that can blow up a planet, but we would never resort Still to German warfare. Load. That's just going too far. But he ends up getting infected himself, and Mungo mercifully gives him the antidote, but because of his penis, Man. he doesn't use it. That's time. really old, isn't it? between these three stories but the way they do it is so awkward in the second story they just sort of leave for no reason in the final one it's implied that they stay with mungo again not canon well but these the droids the look like arc, buddies c3po and r2d2 droids for some reason how very potential why do they get so much hate first they get thrown out of the cantina in a new hope and now this i call racism yeah, I guess this really was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Anyway, they decide to not take the job because they've grown too attached to the droids. However, R2 and 3PO don't want them to miss this opportunity just because of them, so they leave in an escape pod. Yeah, they just bail. They don't even leave a note or anything. And there's no guarantee they'll still take the job. Maybe they got upset and went looking for them. This is just not cool. The voice acting in this isn't the worst I've heard, but Lisa, it's also not the greatest. Really into I love how you can tell where something was dubbed just by the subtle accents. I didn't know about these guys. Master, what are those? I'm not hanging around to find out. Boy, you sound awfully Canadian for someone from They're space. Awful. Although we did get to hear Cree Summer again, even if it was for a short time. Be still, Kobe. Our father must concentrate. Learn to have patience, little brother. 
Oh, and this guy sounds awfully familiar. Let me introduce myself. Captain Kaibo Ren Cha. Oh, 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 that's the guy that voices Mock! And come to think of it, that Empire guy kind of looks like Mock. Whoa. Why does Star Wars keep connecting that's the rock and roll? gone now. Speaking of familiar voices, Jan's uncle kind of sounds like Yosemite Sam. Eat supper and satellites, boy. What in the universe am I supposed to do with two prissy droids and a banged-up android? As if things weren't tough enough around here, you bring home another mouth to pee. Yep. Right. God, sir. That's supposed to be tricky. <laughs> Consorn sassafras and droids! The animation was about on par with most cartoons yep. at the time. Everything is no a little bit of animation. We're coming. Like humans having four fingers. Where did you come in at? I know about that. Then there's 3PO having eyelids for some reason, and R2 looking like he has the consistency of jello. And of course, there were moments that were unintentionally funny. It's fun to just randomly pause and see what hilarity you uncover. That's like this, hilarious! This still Isn't it? Awesome. Ooh! I don't like to force these kinds of things, but this needs to be a meme. That smug look on Jan's face and that big open area that's just begging to have some text slapped Me on it. something, I don't know what to say, but have fun I'll with it. I'll give you a pizza, me. Probably the biggest problem with droids is it's a bit too... I mean, Jar Jar! C-3PO and R2-D2 are I'm lost in the desert, dressing and up they as get Princess sold to some Leia from Star Wars. Becomes a hero. And even Mungo goes through a similar development to Han Solo when he has to choose his friends over riches. So they pretty much friends? stuck with the basics Did ever the movies. Two of you and your friends well, wasn't gonna do that? a lot of things from Star Wars in this show, like the ships, and even a few familiar characters show up, like the Max Rebo Band, the bounty hunting droid IG-88, and even Boba Fett shows up in one episode. There's even a few fun tongue-in-cheek moments. Yup. Pretty amazing cameo. For a stranger a long time ago. That's different. I never came back to pick up a speeder. This is my word and lightsaber. It should do the trick. Stand back. This one has got to be my favorite. You can't do this. Oh, yes, we can. Any preferences as to a new name? You need one to go with your new behavioral circuitry matrix. Well, oh, smelling like stench. Literally. Like... The most surprising thing about the show was how many female characters were in it. There was Kia, who was an active member of the Rebel Alliance, Jessica, who was a no-nonsense skilled pilot, a girl named Aaron helps Mungo, and she's a racing champion. By the way, this is the second time racing has come up in this show. Boy, Star Wars sure loves its Man, races. Man, Misa got Priest that. Priest character gets captured, but gets tired of waiting to be rescued, oh, so she frees herself. Oh, that's really insane, Don't get me wrong. This show is not the epitome of girl power or anything. Misa Personally, tried Personally, you the girls can be just as flat as the men. But Star Wars was not really known for having a lot of proactive female characters. At least not at Man, the time. Man, talk about and now that. now my absolute favorite thing to come out of this show, R2-D2 dancing. Really, R2, this is no time to dance. I know that song. Still got the dance. Your day just got a little bit better because of that That's clip. That's even better. You know, I'm surprised that people remember Ewoks more than droids. Ewoks wasn't that bad, but in my opinion, droids was way better. With Ewoks, they took side characters that should not have existed on their own and made them the focus of an entire series. They definitely tried to make something out of it, but it fell short. Droids also Man, took talk side about characters, but Ewoks, they made the right no, decision no, and one. kept them side characters. Or even no, so literally a different. wasn't their show. They were just along for the ride, and all they did was help out and provide comic relief. Just like they did in the movies. Not to mention this show followed well, three well never know you know the movies that of from action yet. that feels like it belongs in Star Wars. I know Star Wars show Young Jedi Adventures will be coming soon on Disney Junior. Literally. But I, think I know about that. To call this underrated. That's underrated, y'all. So that's Star Wars droids. Not a masterpiece, but I'd say it's worth a watch. Didn't I say this was a review trilogy? What else is there? Well, there was the animated short from the holiday special, but that was like nine minutes long. 
Not really worth dedicating an entire episode to. I guess there were all those Lego specials, but... Eh. Well, not really my thing. that's easy to tell. I talked about Clone Wars, I talked about Ewoks, I talked about droids, I even mentioned Star Wars Rebels. There's gotta be something I'm overlooking. Something super obscure Everything that only someone about like me different. would remember. Oh no! Oh no! The Droids TV Special! Well, and that's about it. See you next time. Oh, it's over. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Well, that's it, folks. Bye bye. <laughs>